That, no, no, that, that can't ride. Let's start another day. I'm gonna work my way down to the bottom, manifolds and a starter and get all that stuff clear. Before we take the heads off, get under there and take the block drains loose so that you can get all the coolant out. Don't lift up the heads without taking the coolant out because it'll go all over every freaking wire. The EVP adapter. My 16th half inch drive. Almost every single time you'll get it out. Head service doesn't look too bad. Over here, we've got a missing bolt. Doesn't even look like it had a bolt in it. Let's hope it fell out. Don't forget to take this tin out right here. All right, she's got a hold of that through the end. I want this off, I don't want to tear it apart. A lot of times people just rip the battery cable by this setup right here. We did it. You're gonna have to get a pushman puller and pry it out and then we deburr that and make that hole bigger. It holds onto this stud like crazy. See that? Yeah, that will not let off. We got two pushpin pullers. I got it pulled out just a little bit, getting it wedged in there in between. See how the nut try to spin off? Let's see. Yeah, you're not gonna pull that off. It still didn't come all the way off. <laughs> still on there a little bit. My gosh. Yay. I've been very intimate with this over the last however many years. Stupid long 13, go all the way from the front of the truck. Boom, right there. Done. And then the other side, you can just get to it from there. It's easy. This top bolt, that is your friend right there. Oh, there it goes. That's what I didn't get. See, I got that side, kind of, but I didn't get that. That's why I would have liked to have taken the starter out before we clean it. Okay, when we crack the block drains, I'll take a funnel, five gallon bucket under here. Better than a mess on the floor. Yep, we're saving a lot of it. Get the other side going too. You put the block drain back in when you're done, because otherwise it just drips every freaking wear. This will at least ensure that we don't lift the heads off and fill all the cylinders with coolant. I've only done it once, but I've done that. Forgot all about coolant, take the heads off. From your waist down, you're soaking wet. Anything else that's in the engine is trash. We got what was left in there and then this. So we got maybe five gallons. And I got these jugs here. What Ooh. color is this? It's like neon. <laughs> We'll label this as Ron's. It's the new Ford diesel coolant. I bought all those jugs. If you go way back, there's a video of me buying this whole container of jugs. Great to have. Behind the starter. That's what the entire engine looked like right there. And that's what I made it look like. And then we go to the other side. A little bit better. Definitely looks washed. Nowhere near good enough, but back in the older video, we uh, showed how nasty this is. This was disgusting. Let's see how burgered up it is. Oh, that went way in. Ready? Yep, that's wet. Ron had it tight, it, it cracked. They won't crack if they're not tight, they'll just loosen. Oh, come on. I think he was able to replace that one. I think they were both weak. Go in the drain pan. Oh my God. There's no O-rings. No wonder it leaked. Wow, he just tightened them up with no O-rings at all. That's pretty, uh, why the hell did Ford put O-rings on it then? We're gonna go ahead and bag these because uh, Ron has been very intimate with this one and he got this one replaced. This one, he didn't, couldn't get, the, the exhaust is right there. It didn't even have an O-ring in it. And you know, that's a perfect, take that out in the backyard, beat you out yourself with it, right there. Now, when we wash the heck out of this thing, I want these injector harnesses. It's time to clean them before we disconnect the Fickham harness. And that's what I did. Not all nasty, chalky, disgusting. There's supposed to be some different Injectors in here. Mm -hmm. Orange is factory and green is reman. I think we'll have to crack it open to see for sure. If I remember right, that's what it is. We'll go ahead and take this breather box off as well. Velcro comes with gaskets. Let's see if I can get it off. We'll get it. I'm gonna hit myself in the face. One would argue we didn't need to take that off. Jesus, that was sealed up tight. But by the time we go through all the cleaning process, yeah. These breather O rings. Never been off, but we replace them. We'll put new ones on. It will drain oil. Put a towel right here. Find anywhere in the whole shop to put it so it's propped up on an angle. It's time. The valve cover's off. Ooh, that one went in tight. Put your finger along the rubber grommet and just kind of move it. It'll help to pop it loose. Passenger side valve cover. These are all bolts back here, from here to here. All the way around should be studs, so just remember that. No milkshake. Updated standpipes. Dummy plugs on this side here. That one did not separate. This one did. It left the tube down on the bottom. Well, we done did it. I might have stripped it. It might have been stripped. 
I don't know, everything else looks so great. Pounded that in there. We will replace any oil rail bolts that are not golden. No way. It won't. It doesn't feel like it's out of a bite. That's tight. Oh my God. Really? Left hand a bit. Got back. No, bigger. I might want to go a little bigger. All right, I drilled a pretty fat hole in it now. I tell you what, if that don't get it, I don't know what to say. Okay, good deal. Got a nice hole in it. Let's we'll see how tight these are. We're gonna be okay on this side. We'll still look at them though. Oh yeah. They show any signs, then they're done. We get rid of them. Okay, tell me if I'm seeing something here, but it looks like all these bolts are bent. Now it's time to put your guys' studs in. M6 by one, put one in the bottom, one over here, and one in the top. And you can pry here and here, and then hold it straight, and you can just pull it right off. And then the guide studs will allow you to drain the oil rail while it's just hovering above the injector. I'm just wedging it up against the guide studs. Works great. Try to keep as much oil as we can in there. Yeah, that hole looks like hammered horse crap. Let's do a little inspection on these injectors. These two and that one look new. See how white the wire is? Look at that one. See how yellow it is? That is an old one. These were put in recently. So we got those three. The driver's side all look the same. So these and the one over there have been replaced earlier. And then we've got three fresher than all of them. This one, I would assume, has put in the same time as all four of those. One, five, and seven is new. Two, four, six, and three are the older ones, but they've all been replaced. It's normal for them to get wedged a little bit in between the rockers, but what I'm seeing right here is when they tighten these studs down, they did not pay attention. You put your fingers right here when you tighten these tins down and you kind of center it in the valve bridge. I don't know what kind of damage has been done to the injector either, because it won't come out. We had a piece of wire loom stuck down in between here. Four is stuck in, eight is stuck in, and number five is stuck. So we've got three of them stuck. All right, so Julie's been just giving it a little bit of bar over. I've been tightening the injectors back down in because they rub on the sides. So we got the last one, number eight. The rest of them are all out on the table over there. I'm sitting here looking at these heads, what can affect how these injectors come out. Now I've had them stick one or two here or there. These heads might be just a little non-blueprinted. The valves might not be exactly where they need to be. Crooked this is, holy shit. Okay, now I'm looking closer. Yeah, that, no, no, that, that can't ride. That's not gonna work. We can't have that. Yeah, that's broken. That is, huh. Now there might've been, if he did tighten it, just all kinds of freaking crazy. That's what I was talking about earlier is you need to kind of play with these and get them to where they're at least in the freaking center. Don't do that. I hate to think that we're gonna have to get all the way to final assembly to find out if this is gonna play Gus too, because that can't fly. Like that, that cannot fly. That is not going to have the cab dropped ever until that's fixed. You know, I actually think that even if you just willy nilly tighten them down anyway, whatever, if the tens go in on the rocker fulcrum, I don't know, I might have to bang on these heads. The placement of where the valve guides are. Okay, that's my first initial thought. Now let's just see if my thoughts change as we dig further. Ah. Okay, so I gave up. Thought about everything and I'm like, you know what? These heads are coming off. Ah. That we can get the injector out now. That would have been a big problem to just replace it. Oh my God, cab it. on? Yeah. If you was messing with that, trying to get this injector out. Right on the bolts that broke on the last truck. It was rubbing right there on the freaking head of the bolt. Look at where that is. That that's, let's see. Ah. I hope that I can get this to straighten up is what I'm hoping because if I can't, ah. we're gonna have to work. Should have barred the engine over. Where do you want it? Ah. I should have barred it over. Ah. I didn't want it to do that. I mean, it didn't hurt it none, I guess, but. I didn't want it to do that. The other one's what I really want to see. We've got about 300 miles on it. You see this round right here on the outside? It has not gone enough to 
hurt the rockers yet. The ultra torque does not go in the engine block. Stop doing that. That does not move at all when you're tightening up, when you're clamping, those inside there do not move. Okay, we might just be looking at he did not pay any attention to lining it up because I think it, everything was cocked all the way over as much as you could possibly get it cocked. That's, that's holding it down. I can't even move it any more than that. Didn't understand that this rides to here and pushes those and he, don't, he didn't get it. Hopefully when we get it all done, we're all putting it back together, I'm torquing the heads down. And when I go to adjust this, I sure hope I can get it to adjust in the center of there. Because if I can't, then we're gonna have to take the heads off and yeah, I don't know. I mean, what does that mean? If I can't get us to go over there, because these are castings from Canada. You can tell by the bosses down on the bottom, they're different. It's not far-fetched that this Canadian casting had something off on the drilling of the valve guides. Any of it could be off. The injector bore, just a, a little bit. I do not believe that all these numbers are correct if I cannot get this to line back up. That's all I'm saying is because it's gonna be a real emergency if we get all this work done and then I go to put this the rockers on and I'm getting ready to torque the heads and I cannot get that over there. It's gonna change the whole, it'll be a whole other video series because these heads are gonna to have to go away. Let's uh, hope we don't have that happen. And after that, we need a lighter note. I didn't show you what we did to the running boards. I took the brackets off and painted them. Didn't do a whole bunch of prep, just threw some paint on them. That way it looks good when we bolt them back up. There. So I needed something a little light of heart. Let's come back here and look at something good that we did. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna run around here and bust all these loose and just turn them that much. While you're at it, bust these tins loose too. Just bust them loose. See how I'm making a, just a quick turn and then I do it in reverse torque, reverse sequence. That way they're loose when you pop the the suds loose, we don't want it to be bound up by that. Now we need to pop these 13s loose, but it might break the Milwaukee. Well, I don't know. He put them in. They're supposed to be real tight. Yeah, it might break it. I don't want to break down. Those are supposed to be like 45, 35 foot pounds, 45 foot pounds. Just bust them loose by hand. Actually, we could take these all the way out. impact is plenty strong to take these off. It's supposed to be. Yeah, he just went, I mean, this was, he just went bad you crazy. I got this on my hands. I don't want to wipe it off because this. Let's try this out. See if this comes off like it's supposed to. Get that, that $20 nut. I see it, it's down here by the tire. Clean them all anyways. this side. Okay, 
Okay, they're popped loose. Hey, gaskets are blown now. You can pull them out right now. You can pull them out later. Do whatever you want, but I might as well take the time before I wash my hands all the way up. Get these separated so nobody has to get dirty. Hand tight. You can see I have not spun it yet, and it's got little mushroom marks on it. This was cab on, and this is... Shit. Shit. Yeah, it does. Yeah, let me get a ratchet. Oh my God, it's not coming out. You asshole. The very bottom one, the cab's right here. So this, this was put in. Oh, it's, I'm just gonna have to lift the head off of it. And if we got to, we'll grab it down here in the center of it and heave it out. I don't want to get that. I hope it, oh, it will fit around it. I can leave that on there. I'm not gonna take that out until it's off the front. It has not spun. So it's, it's still got a good bite on it. It hasn't been, ruined but i gotta get another bit now because i don't have all of them out yet well just you know <laughs> uh the copper end goes up not down the copper end goes up in the rocker to keep from destroying it because the lifter is stronger than the rocker so that's why the copper end goes up and they didn't even do it Damn. Push rods out, they're dripping all over the place. Right when you pull them out, see how these are all backwards. Oh, that's how you get it. Pull it up just a little, and then blow through it right here. And blow it right, blow that oil right back in the galley, right where it came from there. It can go back to there. Slippery little bastards. We got one broke retainer so far. All right, we got those here. This one doesn't have, did he only replace half of them? Okay, no copper odd. on that Let's one. Let's pull out another one. Did you forget? Oh, I... Okay, so that one's... Not the same. Oh, I got one of them mixed up. That is a very good example of why you need to keep your used parts uh, separate than your new parts. Ron, we gotta buy one push rod. Maybe. See how much oil's in here? Yeah, I'll show you on the next one. You want to see? Works so good. Look, now it's not, not even dripping. Oh, there's another one. Wow. Almost got them all in. Yep. 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 Okay, so he only forgot two. Okay. Go ahead and take out the gaskets too, because we go through a lot of cleaning, so I want those gaskets to channel where the gasket rides to be. We can reuse these, I wonder. I don't know if those got put in new or not. Uh, we can reuse them. I don't, I didn't see them look like those. You know what? Wrong way. Oh my God. Yeah, it does not need to be that tight. What in the hell is wrong with you? Wow. Yeah, that was. That was ridiculous. Don't do that. We got a little bit of scratching. We're gonna have to clean that up. It burned it. This is what that other guy could have did, you know? Right when you screw something up, go ahead and address it. That way we don't, I mean, I would argue it was his damn fault who screwed it up any freaking ways, but at least we got it out. I only damaged a little bit down there. There ain't nothing happened there. It'll be fine. You know, I'm, I'm, my attention goes up. Like, generally, it should have spun out with the rocker box on or off. And these two came are coming out by hand. So what I'm getting at is these, these cylinder head castings. I'm hoping that nothing is like haywire with it. 
not letting everything line up properly because these studs should slide in and out without any binding from the rocker box. And they would not spin. They was, they was in the engine and not tight with their, or bound up against the side of the rocker box. That's kind of weird. Stamp them one and two. I mean, not that, you know, these heads were put on in any kind of... was just down in there it's kind of I was laying down in this little valley over here he said they painted the inside of them let's uh, pull it off here you ready here we go. we'll shop back it here in a minute get it cleaned up and barred over and check it we got a little bit looking like right here but What's, I v, don't. what's VP or is that VR? Yep, Victor Rines. Victor Rines had gaskets. So it probably would have only been a matter of time, maybe. I believe it. I believe they would have. Well, who knows how much actually stuck to here. Let's look at the heads. Hey, they look pretty good. We can work with, oh, what's that line right there? What the hell is that? Oh, I can feel that. I can feel that line right there. What the hell is that? That was over here somewhere. Uh, oh, look, there's something in the head gasket. Oh my God, pay attention. Freaking people. There's a freaking dent in it right there. Look at that, you see it? Oh yeah. There's a dent in it right there too. Dents in the head gasket, in the fire ring. This was, yeah. Ron is pretty much absolutely justified here. We don't know about this sealant gone because it could be stuck to the cylinder head as well. Yeah, see, we got some stuck right there. Hmm. Well, heads are off now. There is some rust there. We got kind of a little bit of nastiness going on in the, on the ring too, in the carbon ridge up at the top of rust. That's, that's back at number eight where that was dented in the head gasket. Cylinder eight is where they had that head and, and that's where when you're doing a cab off or cab on there's no room back here you're not i mean he, they probably it was probably blown here not bad enough yet to actually puke and but i mean look it's got a freaking dent in it it's i mean let's see how they did on deck surface prep <laughs> don't even tell anything yet i mean i don't know he probably just like scraped it and I mean it's not even close to good at all like that is not from 100 miles if you look at the cylinder head that is is what it should have looked like so <laughs> this should have the same kind of witness he left all this shit on here absolutely paid almost no attention to deck surface and deck prep and then wonder why the hell you suck at what you do I looked a little closer and look, there's still some blue head gasket and maybe some fuzzy red shop towel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we already know we use red shop towels from the oil cooler reservoir. There's still quite a bit of, well, not quite a bit. It's all fun and games until somebody gets called out. I'm not even going to ask what that is. All right, that one was pretty hard to get out. And from my experience that he torqued the heads, before running these bolts down. They were bound up against the head gaskets, tightening these down. Once I take this off, we're done with what they did. I drop this one. Yeah, I put them up here. And you guys will too, once you. It is remotely terrifying for me, but. Yeah. Kind of be all right. Okay, well, doesn't look like he destroyed the block more than we can fix it. A little bit of discoloration going on in there. I mean, I don't know if it's a refresh candidate. I mean, 
we're gonna clean it up a little better before we make that decision. But this could be a ball hone too. It could be uh, just lap the valves in, ball hone the cylinders, put a fresh set of rings in it. I wouldn't put bearings in it unless we do polish the crank. We get the crankshaft. Uh, we do that and balance the crankshaft. There's, there's a little. Well, we shouldn't even need to touch the heads, should we? They don't even have 500 miles on. I mean, hope not. I mean, but with the fresh rings, we probably probably push if we put fresh rings in it. At least do a lap in on the valves. At least take them apart, clean them all the way up. They shouldn't take hardly anything. Do a couple of laps on it. Maybe go ahead and throw fresh, fresh seals in it. I mean, all that stuff is cheap when you're talking about it being on the engine. There they are. Going back to the back. Short block. Shot back in there pretty hard once we, before we brought this thing on, I don't want to spend any more dirt in between the rings and the cylinders. Get uh, over here and back test this real quick. We do have a machine shop under here, but I hide it, put it up. It's, it's dirty out here, I wanna cover it up. I wanna keep it looking good. Oh, my lever's loose. Oh goodness. Okay, well, uh, not too bad. Now, a leaking like that, we're gonna actually, uh, I don't know. Depends on if we refresh. That, that's actually acceptable. That leaking is acceptable, so. Yeah, like that. Okay, we're gonna run through it like this, and if they all look like that, then we'll be done. Oh. Yeah, they leak about the same. Okay, last one. Wow, see, that, yeah, the last couple of ones, this head has been a little bit better than the other cylinder head. But they do leak just a hair. Let's flip it over and check exhaust. First exhaust. Uh, the exhaust leaks a little worse than intake. There's two valves on the exhaust though. It's quite normal for it. Eh, not too bad, let's keep going. I'm gonna check them all and anything horribly bad, I'll let you know, but they're about, I mean, last one. Yeah, see, they're not too bad. They're not too bad. If we, do not rebuild, we can ride with these. But, I mean, it'd be nice if they were a little bit more sealed up. I'd like to lap them in. It would just be lap. I, I don't know that, unless we see anything crazy in there, I don't know that I would. Uh, I wonder if they have guides in them too, or if these are integral in the, because these are from Canada. Yeah, I don't know where they're exactly from, but I have not seen the valve guides. I haven't seen anything inside of here. So. Let's look in it. A little bit of... Take what you want out of that. I'm leery on running cylinder heads to the spray cabinet, taking a chance on damaging those valve seals. Right now I wanna get the oil off of them so I can like handle them. That's what we're doing right now. I'm not really through here, clean out the bit. The guy that did the job, I guess said that Four injectors got ruined because there was metal inside of here for some reason. Which, who knows? Um, I mean, I'm sure we can trust everything. Whoever that guy was. Yeah. We saw the fabulous work he did. Yep, just watch all this crap out of here and then I'll blow it really dry because I want to be able to move the heads around. I don't want them to be all nasty. I mean, you want to take your cylinder heads from the machine shop, you should do do this to them. Bear them all the way. 
just spray them with some hot water and then blow them bone ash dry. The blow gun. And then machine shop will be so happy. And right here, let's look. Let's see if we can just I tried to straighten that up. They get bent all the time from people just taking the intake off, not taking the tube out. The wire brush it all up and get out of the I really do not like these ends being all rusted, so we wire brush and we will paint these too. Take it all over here. I don't want any rust under the hood. I just spent a whole bunch of time. The manifolds are almost ready. Uh, wire brushing all them. We're just hanging out over here, wire brushing everything. Valve covers are ready to paint. We got stuff going right there. Drying. This is the grind table. Still got the freaking rocker boxes and the balancer. Uh, okay. I just spent a whole bunch of time sitting there with the blow gun and the bench grinder. And, uh, Oh, I gotta stretch my back out. That is a lot more like it. <laughs> That's what your IT sensor is supposed to look like before you put it back in. That is the same sensor. And this is multiple generations of not being clean. All these lines did not get here in 100 miles. See, I run a screwdriver all along this whole thing and knock all that crap out. Just run along it. I mean, see it all coming out? I mean, this was supposed to be clean. Uh, not so much. And this one gets the crap beat out of it here. Look how nasty that is. Yeah. So I'm just going to run around and clean it up. When we get done and I'm folding this stuff on a truck, it's going to be good. I won't have to, hopefully, I won't have to run around and finish cleaning something because it didn't get final clean. Right now I call this final cleaning. This is, when we get done with this, it's ready to put on the truck. Let's go ahead and look for witness marks. That's number seven. Number five. There's one right there. Oh, there's another one. Now who knows if they had witness marks because it surfaced it. That kind of looks a little freaking screwed up right there, doesn't it? The push rods are in order. That's probably shot back, actually. Oh, is that a witness mark? Looks like it might be a witness mark. All right, that's number three. Here's number one. Yep, right there. Right there. Okay, let's go to the other side. We're just looking right now for witness marks. I haven't even checked the bore gauge. We've been over cleaning parts and getting all the heads off parts clean and done. That's what we've been working on. What is that? 
Something's stuck in it. Oh. Didn't have a flash on. That's number six. Six looks okay. Let's go back to number eight with a flash. I don't see anything on eight. Four doesn't look uh, too bad. Okay, so we got a couple of witness marks and a little bit of shading on the passenger side. Not exactly sure how far we're gonna go with it and what we're doing, if, it, if we're gonna rebuild it, if we're gonna, I'm not sure yet. Actually, we spent all day, the shop's all shut down. We spent all day cleaning parts, getting all the crap that we took off clean. Now it's all on the shelf. All the parts are done. Well, all the parts that are off the truck are done. These are all ready to go back on the truck. We did clean out the oil cooler and we're gonna let it just sit there and blow through it, shot back through it every now and then. Maybe it'll help that stay alive. I hope so. But that's a good wrap right there. Heads off, parts clean, and tomorrow looks like uh, it's, it's engine out time. Yeah, let's do it.